Mr. Heavyweight Boxing today. Heavyweight Boxing fans, what's the deal? Alright man, so over the last week or so since I've been off YouTube, I've been keeping track of some of the uh, boxing news, well the heavyweight news. Um, and I've seen uh, Eddie Hearn has came out and said he wants to make this Luis Ortiz versus Jarrell Miller fight. Then I've seen Jarrell Miller come out and voice his opinion about the fight. Um, Hearn says he wants to make the fight in April, but he wants to make it in the U.S. He wants to promote a fight over here in the U.S., which I think is a good idea. You know, for a fan like myself, I can watch this, you know, watch Eddie Hearn card live uh, on TV instead of trying to find a stream, you know, on the Internet. Sometimes it don't work out. So I would love to see uh, Hearn put together a car, especially if it's Miller versus Ortiz. He thinks that that can be the, the headliner, be the main event of its own card. Um, he wants it in April. Now you got Klitschko versus Joshua April 29th. So I don't know. You would think it should be on that undercard. You know what I mean? Being there's going to be 80,000 plus people in Wembley that day or that night of the fight. Um, it's a huge card. Joshua Klitschko unification for the main event, you know, so I'm not sure who's going to be on that card Maybe somebody can leave in the comment section. I don't know what Hearn's plans are as far as uh, filling up that that fight card The Joshua versus Klitschko, but I understand what Hearn is trying to do, you know He thinks that they can uh, headline their own fight here. I'm sure Showtime will most likely have something to do with it if it's in the US um, as far as uh television you know, so Miller, from the articles I read, has came out and said that uh, the, the money's fine as far as what Hearn and those guys are offering him to fight Ortiz, but it's not the money. His thing is what happens after this, after he beats Luis Ortiz, then what? You know, if he gets past Luis Ortiz, then what? And the things that he's saying, I understand what Miller is saying. Um, if he were to beat Luis Ortiz, he's saying that he wants a shot at uh, Joshua or Klitschko, whoever has the title. He wants that WBA title shot. You know what I mean? Because there's other guys out there, man, that will have done less that have gotten title shots. Whether you want to say they were uh, voluntary defenses or whatnot, that's fine. But Arthur Spilka, I mean, Johan Duopa, Eric Molina has had, what, two title shots in the last, what, 18 months or something like that? Fought Wilder, then he fought uh, Joshua. Um, yes, he did beat Thomas Adamak, and then after that he got him a Joshua fight. Um, Dominic Brazil got a, a fight with uh, Anthony Joshua. You know what I mean? Glasscoff and Charles Martin fought for a vacant IBF title fight. You know, you can argue that those guys really didn't do anything that would be on the level of what Miller would be doing if he defeats Luis Ortiz. So I understand what I totally understand what he's saying, man. He said that the money's cool, the money's right, but it's about legacy. I want a title shot. Um, when I beat Ortiz. Now, will he beat him? That's up for debate. You know what I mean? But he's a confident young dude. You know what I mean? Uh, undefeated, brash, cocky, powerful, you know, um, but unproven, though. Unproven. You know, it's not like he's beaten a Vladimir Klitschko or a David Hay or somebody like that. So he's still unproven to some degree. You know what I mean? Um, you look at the WBA rankings, and I wouldn't see why the WBA wouldn't just go ahead and make this for a. Uh, the winner of this fight will still be, you know, we know that Ortiz is the mandatory, but if he was to fight Miller and lose, then that should make Miller the mandatory. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not sure how their their rules work with the WBA. If your mandatory fighter takes a fight and he loses, uh, does the guy that beat him, does that make them the mandatory? You would think that it would keep being final eliminators. If, if you're the mandatory, you keep fighting. If you lose, hey, you just lost your spot. You know, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, but you look at the WBA rankings, I mean, shit, Miller's rated number eight, you know what I mean? And the guys rated ahead of him, Houston off, he's awaiting the winner out of, uh, Briggs versus Kendo. And then you got Klitschko up there, you know what I mean? Like he's highly rated by the WBA. And then you have Luis Ortiz, number one, David Hayes, number six, Eman Emmanuel Charles, number seven, Trevor Bryan's number nine, Kirby Pulev is number 10, you know what I mean? So... Briggs and the Kendall's going to take care of each other. Then Usenov's waiting on the winner of that fight for that regular WBA heavyweight title. Um, so this fight, to me, it, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Uh, Miller is rated number 13 by the WBC. Ortiz is rated number 3 by the WBC. 
Miller's rated number nine by the IBF, number four by the WBO. You know what I mean? So let's make the fight happen, man. You know, A.D. Hearn is pretty much, uh, he's, he's moving Ortiz along pretty well, in my opinion. Malik Scott, he fought him, he, he fought him in November, then he turns around the very next month and fights David Allen. Um, two fights that he was supposed to win, he was the favorite in those fights, but he's keeping Ortiz active. He kept him active when he first got him. He had two fights within 30, uh, 30 days of each other, and then now he's talking about getting him in there with a the guy that's rated highly by all the sanctioned bodies, well, besides the WBC He's in their top 15, but he's in the top nine of three of the other sanctioning bodies. Um, and you're getting him in there with an undefeated prospect slash contender, you know, trying to break through type of fighter in um, Jarrell Miller. So the fight makes sense. I'm down for the fight, man. You look height pretty much even. Miller may be a little bit taller. I know they're both listed as six foot four. Miller seems as if he's a little bit taller than Ortiz, in my opinion, man, because I seen Miller just take a picture with Charles Martin the other day. Um and, and Miller looked about he was about taller. He damn it looked like he was taller than Charles Martin. And Martin lists him at six five. I don't know, maybe Miller had on a pair of Timberlands or something. I don't know, but he looked like he was damn near taller than Martin, if not the same height. So he looks about he looks like he's a legit 6'4", 280 pounds, um, Ortiz, 6'4", 240. He has that reach, though, that 84-inch reach, man. Um, he didn't really use his reach and use the jab how some fans wanted him to in that fight with David Allen. I just think he was using the use the jab that way because he was trying to make Allen react and uh, pick him off. And he wanted to get close and, and rain down body shots. Um, but Ortiz has a good jab when he wants to use it from the distance, in my opinion. But he likes to let his, you know, his work go in, in close range, man. Hit you with uppercuts and powerful shots. But, um, you know, Miller, you know, he, he brings the youth. Um, his toughest fight is today, at least on paper, was Fred Cassie, and he took care of him. Whether you want to say Cassie was getting tired or he was injured or, you know, I know Cassie said a few things after the fight. But to me, it looked like Miller was just putting on the pressure. It looked like he was going to catch up to Cassie and probably eventually stopping him. I think he was just too much for him, man. Um, and Cassie was a guy that looked, you know, he... Fury didn't look all that great against him. Brazil didn't look that great against him. Areola, Mansoor got knocked him out, but up up until the knockout, it was kind of a back and forth type of fight. You know, Cassie style switch from righty to lefty. But um, Cassie had a, I think the first was a, I can't remember the fight exactly, but like the first round against Miller, I thought he did pretty well. And then uh, looked like Miller just gonna catch up the size and just the 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 youth and um, the power. The like he's gonna start to put that pressure on Cassie, man. But um, I'm down for this fight, man. You know, I think it'd be good for Ortiz to get back in the ring. Um, he hasn't been in it. Well, shit, December. You know, he fought on that Joshua versus uh, Molina card. Miller hasn't been in the ring for a while. He hasn't been in the ring since August 2016. That's what, five months right now? So definitely want to get him back in the ring. You know what I'm saying? He did fight Nick Guavis and Donovan Dennis. I thought 2016 probably his best year. Donovan Dennis was a good win. Dennis was a good amateur. Um, made it to the ESPN Boxino Tournament. He lost to Andre Fedosev. Um, you know, so I thought that was a good win. The Guavis fight, Miller was just too much for him. But, um... I definitely want to see this fight, man. Not really much else to say. I mean, it's it's a fight that, to, to me, I, I like it. Ortiz wants to stay busy. And he just doesn't want to go in there against some bum. Eddie Hearn's not trying to put him in there with a guy that we never heard of or some uh, third-tier journeyman where we're just scratching our head. You know what I mean? Where it has seemed like Ortiz probably get better work just going to the gym and just staying in shape at the gym. But this fight makes sense, and everybody's road to a title shot, man, isn't going to be as easy as some other guys, you know. I know some people say, man, why should he have to fight a guy like Miller? He's already the mandatory. That's the game, man. Every, you know, everybody's uh, road to a title shot is a little bit tougher than some other people's, you know. Some people are just put in better situations, little, you know, a little bit of luck, you know what I'm saying, but... um. Whether it's Ortiz or Miller that wins this fight, you know, their journey just isn't as easy as just, you know, you're the mandatory. Got to keep fighting sometimes, especially when a situation like this where the winner out of Joshua and Klitschko, <clears throat> they're ordered to fight 
Luis Ortiz. Kirbet Pulev is also ordered to fight whoever is going to have that IBF title. You know that they're fighting in a you know unification fight, so who knows how long Ortiz will have to wait for that shot. So in the meantime, let's fight a guy like Jarrell Miller, a guy that's coming to win. <clears throat> Some people may even pick Miller in the fight. You know, but um, I guess we'll see what happens, man. I guess we'll see what happens. But April, I'm down for the fight, whether it's on the uh, Klitschko and Joshua undercard at Wembley or if it's headline, headlining its own card here in the U.S. in April. I'm down for the fight. Um, but I definitely understand where Miller's coming from, though, man. If he beats Ortiz, this, ha this has to get him a title shot. You know, I mean.